In my previous episode on buttons, I was ridiculing Notion's buttons on how limited they were. <laughs> However, I couldn't help but notice that there is one helpful feature that Notion has and Coda doesn't. And it is the capability to show a confirmation dialog before the action is taken. Now, of course, Coda has an undo capability and so does Notion, but the confirmation dialog can actually be helpful. First, it makes users stop and think. Second, it prevents accidental changes that are easy to overlook and then it's too late to undo them. And finally, there are actions that you cannot undo, like sending an email. When it's out, it's out. Unfortunately, at the moment there is no native capability to show a confirmation dialog in Coda. But Coda is extremely hackable, so there is at least 5 ways to make one. In this short video, I will show you my favorite way how to make a makeshift confirmation dialog with a row model. Sure, it's a little bit too large and not looking as accurate as the Notions one, and it requires a bit of effort to set it up, but the good news is that you can create it once and then reuse it across many tables and many docs. So let's go. Ok, here's our sample doc, a simple task tracker, nothing special. In our table of tasks we have a delete button which deletes the row right away. This will be our destructive action that we will try to cloak with a confirmation dialog. To do that, first we need to create another button, check, and we need to create a helper table, check. Notice how I'm contradicting what I was saying in the doc structure episode. Here I name my page HLP, but I don't name my table like that. That's because I created this table with a single purpose, to show this pop-up dialog, which we will set up to look as our confirmation dialog. I don't intend to make any views of it. I'll be opening the pop-up directly from the base table. And when I do, I want this to read nice and clean, confirm delete task, not HLP, yada yada. This is one of those few exceptions to the rule. Now let's set up this helper table. We will need 5 columns. The first one is a relation column to our table of tasks, so that we can link to the task we are about to delete. Don't forget to disable the multiple selections toggle, so that it is a single select column. Next is a prompt message, and it's the easiest to just use the compose column for that. See how we are including an exact column from the task reference? We don't just use the add task, because that would insert an add reference to the row. Instead I'm pressing equals, and I'm inserting a formula of task, and the exact column of the task name. And I'm doing the same thing with the project, that I'm getting from the associated task. Now I can also very meticulously, like with my keyboard, select this pop-up and press Ctrl B to make it bold so that the name of the task and the project stand out in the message. Next are obviously two buttons for rejecting and confirming the operation. Now if this were a positive operation, like confirming a creation of something, I would have made this button green and probably have chosen another icon, but since it's a destructive operation like deleting something, I'm using the color red and the icon that corresponds to the original action. Now I'll explain these actions more deeply in a moment, for now what you need to know is that this action here will close the dialog and delete this row, and the confirm button will also do the same, but before that, of course, press the delete button on the linked task. And now the fifth column, we just take the value of the composed message and repeat it here. Now why the heck did we do that? That's because no matter how you try to center the compose column value, it will never be truly centered, it will be off to the side. And yes, I'm a bloody perfectionist, I want everything to be aligned. So that's the only reason why we are creating this extra column, and of course it has to be of the type text, not canvas. All right, now Next, let's set up our model. Click here, go edit the layout, optionally give it a descriptive name, I like to do that. And I'm not writing that it's specifically for the tasks table, because we can reuse whatever we just created on any table to make any confirmation dialog. Let's hide the name, let's hide the object, let's hide this compose column, let's take the message, hide the label and set it centered, and let's place buttons side to side, and see how the reject action goes to the left and the confirm action goes to the right, that's like a conventional way to do it. That's how you'll see it in many interfaces. Again, remove the labels, make the cancel button aligned to the right. Of course, they are not gonna be 100% centered, but it's good enough. Also hide all the link to the hidden columns and all other things, and check. This is how our dialog will look like. And now let's go and set up our button. First, rename the old button, let's call it do delete. This prefix will signal us that this is a button for internal use only. It has the action that we might want to click from other buttons eventually or from an automation, but it's something that we don't want to show to the user. Instead, we'll make another delete button that will be user facing, which will open our confirmation dialog. 
So let's set it up. We just gave it a color, the same icon and the same label. Notice this ellipsis. This is yet another conventional thing in user interfaces that says, oh, this button doesn't immediately do what it says. There is an extra step so that you have an extra confirmation before you actually do it. It's a nice way to do this, but if you don't want to, that's your call. Now let's set up the action. And again, I won't speed this up, hoping that you already guessed where this is going. And that is it. That's our action. Now when we click it, we get our dialog opened. We can click cancel and nothing happened. We open it again, click delete and the task is gone. Now we can just hide this button altogether. Okay, let's recap how this works. You've probably got it already. Every time we click a delete button, it creates a new row on the helper table. We don't reuse existing rows, it's just easier to create a new row, link the task there, and then we just open that freshly created row. And that's precisely why in both reject and confirm actions, what we are doing is that we are deleting this row. So this is the most important part of this formula. Now, why on earth do we need all these things? See what happens if we only keep the delete row. I open the dialog, I click cancel, we are taken out of the dialog, but then this pop-up appears, this row no longer exists. Yeah, we were thrown out of the dialog because the row is deleted, but this can be pretty confusing. So what we are trying to do with this action is get rid of that pop-up. First, we use this idiom, it's a tricky way to navigate a user out of the dialog. This is undocumented and this might break, but this makes sure the dialog is closed and the user is navigated back to the page they were in. Now, what about this delay hidden function? This delay function with a zero milliseconds timeout. Make sure that this action happens on the next frame after the user has been navigated out of the dialog. Any JavaScript developers here is the same as the set timeout function. If we don't use this delay here, what we will get is still the same passkey pop-up. And the confirm action, yes, as we said, it's the same two lines of code, plus actually clicking our button on the linked task. Now we are mostly done, but there's just two things left. First, okay, we took care that the row is deleted when you click either of these buttons. But in reality, people will often close this dialog like this, or just click out of it elsewhere on the page like this. So we will end up with lots of abandoned rows and they will keep piling up. What I suggest to do in this case is set up an automation that once in a while cleans up these abandoned rows. To do that, create another column with a property of last modified on. This will be an indication of what was the last time the user changed something in this row. And Next, go into the automations and create a time-based rule that will run, let's say, at 5 a.m. every Monday. Or if there is a lot of activity in your doc, you can make it more frequent. And then in automation code, delete the rows that are, let's say, older than a day until the automation run. And the second thing we need to clean up is this navigation bar. We do have an automation to clean up our abandoned rows, but until the automation fires, these rows may pile up. And this thing here shows that there are 17 abandoned rows that haven't yet been deleted. And the user can actually navigate to any of them and finish the deed, which is really undesirable. What if it's a task that we shouldn't be able to delete? So yes, safeguarding this button is a good idea, but what we should do to even avoid this one of 17 navigation is to just set up a filter that will not let any rows through. Can you guess what the filter should be? It should just read false. Meaning that this expression is always false no matter what row it is trying to check. And this way all the rows are hidden and whenever you click delete it will always show one of one. Meaning we are only looking at the row we just created. It's always one of one. So yes, until we get a native pop-up encoder, I made a feature request for it in the community. Please upvote, the link is in the description. This is how you do it. It is a bit of work, but the good news is that if you need this for another table, like for the table of projects, setting it up is as easy as just duplicating this page with a helper table, calling it differently. Replacing the reference to tasks with two projects, fixing the message accordingly and the confirm button and recreating that user facing button on that table. And we've got our dialog installed on this table as well. Okay, I realize it's a little bit of trouble to set up and requires more than basic skills of coding. And here I could totally tell you to subscribe to my Patreon because that's where you will get the ready template that you can just copy into your doc. But as much as I'll appreciate that, I actually want you to recreate this for yourself. 
following the steps in this video. Because even if you're a beginner, this will give you a massive knowledge boost. I really hope that this interplay of tables and how buttons can click buttons from elsewhere in the dock is truly an aha moment for you. It sure was for me back in 2019 when I first discovered these capabilities of Coda for myself. Now, some of you might be wondering why we went through all this trouble of setting up a separate table for this dialogue instead of just adding a couple of columns to the table of tasks and making such pop up there. Well, and I'll talk more about this in one of my next Essentials episodes, it is always better to keep your data tables just about the data and avoid putting all that just for the visuals stuff in there. You should strive to keep data as clean as possible. And since we're using buttons anyway, we can totally create a row elsewhere in a separate dedicated table and open it and delete it and everything will work seamlessly and transparently and you wouldn't even know it's a different table in there. So in a nutshell, whenever you have a choice between cutting the corners and setting it up in the same table or putting it in a separate table but having to go through the trouble of setting it up, I would advise always going through the latter. Okay, that's been all from me for today. I hope you enjoyed this shorter episode. As much as I'd like to make every episode as the one on the buttons, the next few episodes will be shorter and simpler like that. I need to record many of them up front and then make room for yet another big episode. But shorter doesn't mean less valuable, so like, subscribe, check out my Patreon, consider becoming my supporter, and I'll see you in the next one.